Now, last time, we spoke of God not being dysfunctional, and by the end of that conversation, we noted that we were mainly addressing those who call themselves Christians. So, how does God respecting our choices to love or to not love apply to Christian people? That is what we're going to explore here in this video. Now, my name is Charles, and this is a simple, not shallow video. A video for those who want a deeper faith, not a confusing one. And that is what our name is all about, keeping faith in Christ simple. Well, simple enough that a child like myself can understand it, and yet not shallow. Not so shallow that when the storms of life hit, our faith is forced to run aground. See, we want our faith to be like a very good cup of coffee, really. Simple, strong, full of flavor, and richly satisfying. Yes. Richly satisfying. So here we go. Now, as we begin, it is very important to remember that first and foremost, we are all simply human beings folks who are prone to be rather hard-headed and more than a little self-centered. See, entering into a relationship with God does change things, but some things will still require a very tenacious desire on our part to allow the love of God to have its way in us. Or we will once again fall into behaviors from which we thought we had been delivered. Paul said it very well when he said this, he says, but I beat my body and bring it into submission, lest, by any means, after I have preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. Now, everything he means by that is a topic for a different video. However, that he could be disqualified indicates he still had choices he had to make. See, Jesus, when teaching his disciples to pray, taught us to pray and to ask for our daily bread. Now, often we tend to think of this as referring to our daily physical needs. And, well, that is definitely part and one aspect of our daily bread. And yet here's a thought for you. What if he is speaking about our spiritual needs instead? See, this phrase, when he's teaching us the Lord's Prayer, lies exactly in between asking for God's kingdom to come and for forgiving us of our sins. And it just seems really strange to me for Jesus to be saying, God, your will be done. Now feed me and forgive me. Sounds strange. See, it makes much more sense if we see our daily bread as a spiritual need. And so Jesus would be praying, God, your will be done. Now supply us with what we need to do our part and forgive us. That makes much more sense. Also, in light of Jesus' response to Satan a little later when he says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Or when he says to his disciples, I have food to eat that you do not know about. My food is to do the will of him who sent me. Or again, when Jesus says, my father who gives you the true bread out of heaven and gives life to the world well, see, reading our daily bread as a spiritual need in, in light of all these passages just simply makes a great deal of sense, does it not? And is it not intriguing that we have to ask our Father to give us daily what we need to be spiritual, to be holy, to be, as Jesus prayed, one, even as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may also be one in us in order that the world may believe that you sent me. See, it is a daily choice. It is a daily prayer. We must choose each day to love. And God will not force us to love him, will not force us to seek this daily need. Now, there are many examples in the Bible of those who did not seek this need from God. For example, there's Joshua, when he made the alliance with the Hivites without looking to God for this provision. There's David, when he did not seek this daily portion before looking upon Bathsheba. There's Jonah, who did not seek it before running away from God's mission to Nineveh. 
In the New Testament, there's Peter, who did not partake of it before he held himself aloof from the Galatia, uh, Gentiles in Galatia. And the list goes on and on and on. The Bible is brutally honest when it comes to human shortcomings. And there are even examples in abundance of things that will require us to seek this daily need to be met. These examples include to be careful that by no means does this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to the weak. To bear all things so that we will cause no hindrance to the good news of Christ. To let him who thinks he stands be careful that he doesn't fall. Or to beware, lest being carried away, you fall from your own steadfastness. Well, and again, this list goes on and on and on and on. See, there is much we must do, and we need to choose to ask God each and every day for what we need. See, for all these great tasks, we need our daily bread. We need to have our spiritual needs met. We need the love of God as never before. Now, see, I've mentioned John 15 in several previous videos, and I'll link to some of those in the description box below. And we have discussed what abiding in Christ means and how love is the fulfillment of the law. As such, it is our great need, and we must ask God for it daily. Not that we need to ask God to love us. Uh, no, that's not what's being said. What we need to ask for is that He would provide what we need, not what we want, but what we need, in order to learn to love, to help us stay abiding in Him. That well, Jesus' prayer would find its fulfillment and we become one, even as He and the Father are one. See, the result of this would be that His kingdom would then come to earth even as it is already in heaven. Now, this post is already getting a little bit long, but I would be remiss if I didn't mention a negative aspect to this whole, our needing to choose every day and God respecting our choice. See, as mentioned in our last video, God respects our choice way too much to force what is best for us upon us, to force us into a vital relationship with Himself. If we choose not to ask for this daily assistance, for this daily sustenance, for our daily bread, He will not make us do so. However, if we choose to not love, well, Jesus graciously gives us warnings as to where that choice will lead. He does this in Matthew chapter 7, Matthew 25, and Luke chapter 13. See, in all of these, he tells us, gives us a warning for those who wish to claim his name, but stay out of the game. See, these passages speak a warning to all those who do religion very well, but who do not love. Simply put, to those who do not choose to abide in Christ. These passages all speak of a time of judgment and of those who have chosen not to love and are then told to depart from God's presence as He does not know them. How sad to dedicate yourself to learning things and doing things, dedicating your whole life to getting the religion right, and yet missing out on the one whom the religion is about. Missing out on abiding in the love of Christ. Never learning to love. See, we are told that the one who does not love does not know God. So do you see now how choosing to love applies to those who call themselves Christian? Well, as much as to those who do not? See, it does so because it applies to every single human being on the planet. For every human being is, after all, merely a human being. A human being that is in desperate need of learning how to love simply, wisely, and well. 
Well, what do you think? Please tell me in the comments section below. Also, in that description box below, I will list all the Bible passages that I referenced in the order that I referenced them. That way, you can check me out, make sure I'm not making any of this up or that I'm not really way out in left field. Also, if you like this video, please click that like and the subscribe buttons, and then click that great notification bell and tell YouTube that you want to be notified each time a new video is posted. Also, if you would like to take this with you and this video with you in the form of a podcast, you can now do so. Simply go to simplenotshallow.com and you can download it there, or you can subscribe to the Simple Not Shallow podcast through the podcast service of your choice, be that iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, whichever you'd like. And that way, you can listen anywhere, anytime, any way that you'd like to listen. Well, thank you. Thank you very, very much. And I'll catch you next time.